97% of Americans think that the Earth is round. Although all around the globe, there are people who say they believe the Earth is flat. But do you recall anyone ever asking you what you thought about our big blue marble? If you don't recall ever having been asked your considered opinion about the curvature of the Earth, don't be surprised. Not every American was asked this question. So how can these researchers make the claim about 97%? The answer is they used sampling. They did not ask everyone in the population. Rather, they asked a representative sample. 97% of their sample agreed that the Earth is round. And therefore, they took what they learned from that sample and applied it back to the population. Not everyone had to be asked. A small representative sample can give useful information about a population parameter. One of the major applications of statistics is estimating population parameters from sample statistics. What is true of the sample should be true in general of the population. The sample is a point estimator for the population. For example, a sample of college-aged males is 5 feet 11 inches tall on average. 5 foot 11 is the point estimate for the population mean. If you are asked the average height of all college-aged males, this point estimate is going to be your best guess. The point estimate is a statistic from the sample that is used to estimate a parameter in the population. And point estimation also works for proportions. If 64% of a sample of Missouri residents support Medicaid expansion, then 64% is the point estimate of the population proportion. Not all point estimators are equally good. We already know that when a sample is not representative of its population, then its point estimation will be biased. But a point estimator can also be imprecise because of random measurement error. Therefore, when we calculate a point estimate, we also want to know how good is it? How much error does it have? What is its margin of error? When I'm teaching a statistics class, I try to come up with real-world examples to illustrate the concepts. So recently, I was looking for an example of a point estimator with a margin of error around it. And as you can imagine, this is kind of difficult. But I finally came up with one. My concern, though, is that it's kind of obscure. It happened a few years back. It's pretty much out of the news. No one's even talking about it anymore. A few years ago, back in 2020, we in America had a presidential election. Nothing special about it, just your typical every four years free and fair election. As far as I know, no one's ever said otherwise. But leading up to that election, there were a series of predictions made about its outcome. And those predictions came in the form of political polling. You may have seen political polls that predict two things. The first is the point spread based on who is leading in the polls. But those point spreads are always couched in a margin of error. These two lines represent proportions of the vote, or predictions. Now, as you can see, the blue line and the red line never cross. There was never a time when one person was leading and then the polls changed and the other person was leading. It was always clear from the polling who was going to win and who was going to lose. The only question was, by how much? At different times throughout the year, the predictions were closer or further away. But by election day, the polling predicted an eight-point spread, 52% to 44%. It took a few days to finish counting all the votes. Remember, there's a pandemic going on at the time. But once every vote had been properly counted, the outcome was exactly as had been predicted. However, something had happened with the point spread. The vote total in the election was much closer than had been predicted, with a final tally of 51% to 47%, a four-point spread, not the eight points that had been predicted. The polling data had consistently overestimated the lead of the winning candidate by three to four points, which was the highest error rate in political polling since 1980. 
However, that four points was still outside of the margin of error, giving the same overall result despite the internal polling estimation error. So let's apply this to point estimation and margins of error. Every poll you've ever read is a sample. A relatively small number of citizens are asked for whom they would vote if the election were held today. The results of the poll are an estimate of the ultimate outcome. But there is always an error of estimation. Polls are always couched in a margin of error. Reality, in the form of the actual election outcome, is the true population parameter. The polling data are used to estimate reality in the ultimate election. Polling data is a point estimate, and it is always specified with an error estimate. For example, the point spread is four points with a margin of error of 3.5 points. If the point estimate is less than the margin of error, then the point estimation is not reliable. It may be wrong. It may even be reversed. If the point estimation is a two-point difference, but the margin of error is 3.5 points, then the leading candidate may not win. If the point spread is outside of the margin of error, then the overall outcome is much more likely. The leading candidate will win, but that point spread may not be as wide as was predicted in the polling. Every point estimator comes with some level of error. Not all point estimators are equal. Some are better than others because they have less error. But the larger takeaway is this. When you read polling data, no matter how good the poll is, you should always remember that point estimators are always wrong. It's only a matter of how wrong are they. This is true for political polling, but it's also true for estimates of the mean or proportion that we're going to learn about for basic business statistics.